<laughs> Welcome to Babbles Travelling Yarns. This is a small little knitting podcast. I say small because I'm hoping to actually keep it small this time. Um, but actually we've grown considerably and thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed. I think I'm at 14,000 subscribers, which is outrageous. Uh, this is uh, This podcast is four years old, I think, give or take. Um, <laughs> give or take uh, four months because I believe I started in February 20, 2016 or 17, 2016 I think. 14.3, I think that's 2,000 extra, uh, no sorry, 200 extra people. I'm not very good at the maths. Oh well, I'm freezing cold. It is actually so cold. I am just going to put this on this is my Wonder Woman wrap and I'm feeling Wonder Woman-y. This is my own yarn and this was knit for me by my friend Kirsty, I think. Is that right? Or maybe, was it Michelle? Was it you? Oh, it's beautiful. This is my own yarns. It's knit out of Ray and um, Spice, I think. It's pretty, 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 pretty. So, Oh no, I have it here. My, it's the Wonder Woman wrap. The designer is Carissa Browning and the yarn is Old Town and Ray. There we go. And it was knit by Michelle. Michelle. There you are now. Thanks, Michelle. It's fab. Old Town. Oh yeah, it's inspired by like, Dubrovnik and like the old, the old rusty buildings. Oh yeah. Oh, it's nice and bright. It is so dark. It is currently, it's three o'clock, 20 past three, November the 10th. I haven't put on my lipstick. Let me fix that. How's that? Beautiful. I must remember to bring this with me actually to, uh, to Barcelona. It's very important. You have to have your red lipstick. Isn't that right, Corda Gabdel? So, I just did a live video, a live YouTube um, thing, which is actually recorded and saved on my feed as well, where I did a lot of chatting. We chatted about spinning and it was really fun. It was my first ever live. I'm definitely gonna be doing more of them, but I just wanted to recap for those who didn't want to watch a, like a live thing. Sometimes people might not like to. So I've got a couple of things to show you um, and a few events to talk about. Um, yesterday I went up to, on the bus to the Knitting and Stitching show in Dublin. We It only comes to Dublin. I think it might go to Belfast maybe, but uh, it doesn't go anywhere else as far as I'm aware. So it's really fun. We always go up um, and I volunteer at the um, Irish uh, the Irish Guild of Weaver Spinners and Dyers and that was super fun. I met loads of lovely people. I met some fabulous new spinners who were only spinning like a couple of weeks and they're already better than me. Becky, I'm looking at you. Anyway, <laughs> so um, I wanted to um, show you what I was knitting on the way up. It's my Starflake. My Starflake in all of its glory and it is Sorry now. Oh, 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 oh. It's on a 150, 150 centimeter cable, and it's still too short. That cable is too short to show it in all of its glory. This thing's gonna be giant. It's gonna be at least two meters. And um, yeah, so I am at the final part, the final clue. I really wanna take this off and stretch it out and see how it looks because I'm so excited. I did a few modifications, which I spoke about last week. Um, this is knit out of my own yarn. This is Babbles Yarns out of uh, Lark. Lark and the Hungry Grass. If you want to hear a story about why they were called that. Oh, hi beans. The dryer's going because it's Sunday. We're doing all our laundry on this, the one day we have off. Um, yeah, so I want to, um, knit for as long as I can before I get absolutely bored to tears of this border, the garter stitch, but it was really handy to have on the bus up and down because it's really dark in the mornings driving up and then it was really dark coming down because it gets dark at like half four in the evening. So um, it was really nice to have something like this, which I didn't have to look at. Um, so I'm probably going to start casting it off pretty soon because 
Um, this weekend I'm going to Barcelona Knits and I'd love to have this done for Barcelona. So I need to do a, a bind off. Did I skip a stitch there? Oh my gosh, I think I did. Oh well. <laughs> funny. Um, so I need to do an I-cord bind off all the way and what I'm going to do I think is do it on a bigger size needle but the thing is with the I-cord bind off I can just get another needle and do it so I'm just going to get a bigger needle just to make sure that it's stretchy enough because the I-cord can be really tight sometimes. Um, I've been carrying my yarns up the side every time. If you see that? The, the, the scraps they're actually caught all the way in so if you pull them down, they'll actually tuck right in. Um, and I do that by, um, I'm doing it over this side as well. So when I'm knitting, I make sure that the yarn, so this is a, an I-cord slip stitch uh, border. So you slip those three stitches. The yarn is coming, when you finish that row, you, the yarn is in the front and you slip those three stitches. And then when you're knitting, you make sure that those little bits of those little ends are over that yarn and you pull that through so they're trapped when you're knitting with you see that they're trapped when you're knitting with it so let's just pretend I'm starting so I'm just starting knitting there and you knit those three I cord stitches and then there we go that's it nice and trapped and we're ready to go again beans no beans a basket that's outrageous but he's so cute though um so that is my starflake nearly done really happy with that i have it in my deborah makes um bag this is a bag by my friend debbie keely where is the badge there is no oh yes there is a badge oh, there's a little stamp just there, Deborah Makes Crafts, and I've got a little brioche um, brownies badge on there <laughs> by um, Yarnistry. Yarnistry Makes, so brioche. Brioche that's not bread. And there's my brioche that's not bread. There it is. So this shawl was super fun to make. This first star section, so fun. Then this section, really fun. Oh, being stop. You're so annoying. I'm going to give you something to do now in a minute. And then the brioche section, which took forever. And then in last week's episode, I showed you how I do two, one or one pass brioche. Um, and I have edited that video, so it will be a individual uh, video when I get ready. And then I want, somebody was asking how you start um, one pass brioche and that's a really good question and it's not great to start it when you're already doing brioche unfortunately it's better to start it right at the beginning you can move to it you can just start doing it but um, you will get a little bit of a line I think I think you'll end up with like some of the yarn over is kind of a bit missing so you'll get like a little, a little hole all the way through that's what happened with my um, with my other shawl that I was using. This one, actually, it's right here. This one I had cast on for Barcelona last year and I started knitting it using the one pass brioche technique. And then, I don't know if you can see it, but there is just here. Mm, you can see it more with the light coming through it. Let me see if I can switch it around. So I'm going to show you the studio light. Watch out, it's really bright. Uh, so there it is. Do you see that break there? I don't know how I did it. I don't know how to fix it, but that's what happens when you switch from one pass brioche, or sorry, from two pass brioche to one pass brioche. And of course I decided to learn that on the plane to Barcelona, which probably was the reason for it. But you know what? It's like an interesting design. And then there was a mistake down there and uh, it's all super fun. But um, yeah, so it is better to start doing one pass brioche at the start. I'm sure there's a tidy way to do it. I don't know what that is, but I will I will do a little tutorial um, to show you how to start. But I probably will put up the one pass brioche video as a, uh, there you go, Beans. Let you go. Do you want to say hi on the podcast? I, oh, no. He's gone. He's gone now. 
so yeah that's what I was knitting and then what else have I been doing I have a little this literally that's all I've been knitting on so it's quite boring but I do have some winners to announce for other for the pattern giveaways and um, I have some winners that haven't contacted me from the previous podcast if you could please watch the podcast and get back to me I can't chase you down and find you because it was a, a YouTube comment um, so do read if you haven't watched the last one do and uh see if you want something because they're right here and they're waiting for you to be posted um so I had a couple of patterns to give away last week. The first one was um, the Grisham Shawl by Brandy Sharping. And the person that won that was Zez Pizzell. <laughs> Zez Pizzell. Yeah. <laughs> and it was actually lovely to, to read all the comments of the nice things that had happened to you that week. Some people were like, oh, it was a really hard week. But, you know, it, I did find some small things. And sometimes, you know, hard weeks are there, um, but even just realising that you did have some nice time, like some little moments of niceness, that's nice. Sometimes it's all we have, so. Um, then the Boardwalk Stroll Mitts, um, that was won by Bella131, and then the Lights and Twigs Shawl by Barbara from Knitting I Love uh, was won by D Nellums. So all of these people have been contacted. Um, I, I, they've been they've been magic um, magic linked in all of the giveaway threads, and the designer has been given your name. So you should be getting that prize in your Ravelry message box thing. So yay! Congratulations! Well done! And I'm delighted to have uh, been able to give those away because they're so good. Um, actually, the the designer of the Boardwalk Stroll Mitts contacted me because I saw them and I was just going to gift the pattern myself. She contacted me and she was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Um, so she actually donated that pattern um, as well. And I, you know, I didn't force someone into giving it away. <laughs> I hope you didn't feel like that, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer Shields Talent is her name. She's a fabulous designer. She has a really beautiful pattern out as well called the Bubbly uh, bubbly Brioche. And it's all about like champagne and oh, it's really lovely. Um, I she, she was going to give me one of those to give away, but I didn't get a chance. Oh, that was in my hiatus. So if you want to have a little look at that, it's released in sections as well. So it's nice. It's satisfying to kind of chunk away those sections. And all of those sections are out now. So yeah. Um, really beautiful really nice and i hope you enjoy so i've been spinning a bit and you can see what i was spinning and how i was spinning it on my live um but i'm spinning a bfl in silk that i got from wing and woolworks and it's just a just a plain um white that i'm spinning i am um, I got an absolute onslaught of beautiful pattern designs and of course I've lost the details. Where's my book? Do I have a book? Oh I had a whole book full of them. Oh here we are. So this was some of the designs and I have them in my favourites. Um, I have them in a favourites list um, on my Ravelry page and I'll link that little list down below as well but um, some of my favorites were the golden autumn shawl beautiful um, there's a whimsical lace shawl which was really lovely Lady Londonderry was really cute um, it had like a feather and fan I'm not sure I want feather and fan I think I want more of a, a delicate um, open work maybe um, the angel capelet was really cute Intuit Knit sent that in um the lilacious shawl was gorgeous hannah from corner of craft has made her beautiful shetland shawl but it's got nups in it and i'm not too fond of nups i've never realized how picky i am about lace before but anyway the aeolian shawl was sent in by cushing knits thank you so much um mermaid song by gwen bouchon oh my gosh that one is stunning um wild swan was sent in by darth nitty oh my god as well there's the queen sylvia shawl the beaded knits shawl the crimea wedding shawl the sophia shawl and the wedding peacock the wedding peacock is really pretty but it has these kind of straight lines which i'm not sure i'm into um so i think i'm looking at the golden autumn shawl um maybe the mermaid song the wild swan maybe um yeah just not sure if I'm any good but you know 
I'll try. I'll try and then that's it. Um, so yeah, so I, as I was spinning, I was thinking about, well, I'm going to be going to Barcelona and actually I'm glad you're here because that reminds me that I need to have a look at the, um, I have a book, Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible. There we go. There's the bad boy. So I'm going to have a little look for some beautiful lace that I want to include. Oh, there's lovely things. Oh, oh my gosh. It's all too beautiful. So I need to um, knit up a few swatches for that class. So I'm going to take off one of my bobbins and wind it up into a wash and wind it and put it into something um, so that I have something to show Andre at Barcelona. So I'm si I've signed up to the Andre Knits um, Design Your Own Lace Shawl. So, oh gosh, look at all these. So this is the um, Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible um, and it is translated with an introduction by Gail Roem. Gail Roem. So that's really nice. Do you know, I really like these kind of round yokes that they've popped. That's nice. I like that. There's a lot of cable work in there. Which I'm not sure I'm into, but anyway, I'll have a little look. I've got another knit, a sitting uh, uh, Bible. Um, I wonder where it is. Is it in the back there somewhere? Oh, it is. There we go. This one. <laughs> Sorry, I have a load of books down there. So this is 750 knitting stitches. So this is a a, a massive, massive book. And you've got all the edging box pleats and you've got ooh, you've got lots and lots of uh, fair isle as well that's really pretty actually um i'll go this way that feels better to do so it's got all your basic knitting and then you've got your really simple knits and pearls um seed stitches then you've got easy cables and then it goes into more complicated cables then it goes into Come on, give me some lace. Give me some lace, y'all. There we go. There's some lace, lacy stars. Oh, I saw a beautiful pattern like the other day with lacy stars on it, but it wasn't a shawl, it was a jumper. Fern lace, little flowers. So, very nice. Very, so it goes simple and then it gets more complicated. And and then it goes into that's as complicated complex as it gets so i'll do some little bits and i'll see if i can combine a few things and then um see how we go so there are some of the two books that i'm going to be doing some homework on homework so um yeah that's for my huh, that's for my what's it called class my class with Andrew Knits. So I've got a lot to do actually because I'm leaving on Thursday morning. I'm leaving, well, I'm working on Wednesday night. So I'm leaving on Thursday morning to go up to Dublin and then I'm flying out on Friday morning. I've got appointments in Dublin. And then I'm arriving in really early on Friday morning, getting to the hotel at about one-ish. And then basically, partying the night away. <laughs> my class is on Sunday, so at least I have some time if I if I'm stuck if I don't have time to do my um to do my uh homework, but not sure. Homework's for losers. Losers. <laughs> um yeah, so I wanted to speak a little bit about a class I've been watching a little bit in my spare time, which was on, it's a new class because I finished the class on Procyon dyes for, um, for cellulose based fibers, um, on the school of sweet Georgia. And then I, ha I was having a look and I was like, Oh, Rachel Smith has a new class called, um, a, a, it's like sweater spinning. So spinning for a sweater. And 
I just love Rachel. I love Rachel. She has a podcast called uh, Woolen Spinning and she's Well for Pearls on Instagram. She's a fabulous teaching style. She's really clear. Um, she's so methodical. And that's the kind of thing that she was saying about, about spinning, you know, spinning for sweaters. You know, you've got your control card and all this jazz. And I don't know about a control card. I don't think I'm that dedicated and that organized. But if you're, you know, if you are that type of person, <laughs> I just kind of spin and see how we go. But I would love to improve my spinning, which is why I'm taking the class. So um, I'm really enjoying it, but I've only started it. So yeah, but that's on the um, School of Sweet Georgia school of Sweet Georgia. And I'm lucky enough to be an ambassador for them. And I was so I'm gonna say that if you're interested in checking it out I have a link down below if you want to have a little look it's an affiliate link which means that um, any purchases that you make um, I get a small percentage and I am eternally grateful <laughs> and there's also um, a link for Sweet Georgia itself um, uh, which is, is their yarn and things like that and, and the same thing if you're going to be going to buy something that um, I've shown you maybe or you like the look of and you use my link then again I get a little bit of a kickback from that and I really appreciate that um, and there's been a lot of people who have um, who have made some beautiful purchases or I don't know I, I never see what you actually buy but I just see that a little bit has come in and I really appreciate it it really helps just kind of maintain the podcast make sure that I you know give it enough time make sure that I can like make things for you and uh, so many people say that they do enjoy the podcast so I'm just so glad to be able to um, continue doing that through little little kind of sidelines that I've dipped my toe into with dealing with particularly gorgeous companies like Sweet Georgia so um, yeah so exciting um, so I wanted to talk to you a tiny bit about something that James, I have been meaning to do for a while, that it's just like, just, you have to be in the mood for some things, you know? And this thing, definitely I needed to be in the mood for, because it, um, I just realised, I've got a bunch of yarn down there, and I don't, no idea what that is. Oh, it's the natural dye journal. Oh God, that's bad. <laughs> I have so much yarn, I don't know what it is, like, anyway. So, James has these special pair of socks that he bought like a year, millions of years ago. They're very old, very banjaxed. He loves them more than me. <laughs> and they look like this. They have flames. That's the main reason. But you see this? So I attempted to do some darning on one of them right but this is there's there's no darning that's gonna save this bad boy and this is the heel then anyway there was a hole here that I did manage to patch over and then I was like oh but there's also so much more like how do I even how do I attempt this so I started like literally just like building bridges, building little bits where I could weave. And to be honest, I realize now that because it's not just at the, like literally the tip of the toe is the only good bit of this actual toe. Like this whole bit was just being held together by hope and nylon. Like there's nothing. <laughs> Nothing. It's just like a fleecy, oh, look at that. Oh my God. So there's no saving these. These need to, yeah. There's no saving the toes and the heels, but I was thinking I could chop that off. That's where it starts getting a bit threadbare. Like literally that's actually what threadbare means. I think, <laughs> I think that's, yeah. So chop that off and then just re a pair of socks. I need some black yarn. And yeah, he says he doesn't mind, like he doesn't have to be like all darned. Like, have you ever heard the story of like the shovel of this workman and he loved this shovel so much and the handle had been replaced loads of times and so did, had the actual shovel at the bottom because he used it so much that it just wore away, but it was still in essence the same shovel, even though everything was different. 
So that's what he wants. He, he doesn't mind if I have to chop that bottom part off, but this is a man that lives in these, as you can tell. This is the other one. This is the other sock. Look at that. He just walks around in them. Hello. So I'm gonna have to do something about this. I'm thinking, uh, yeah, I'll do a toe up and then I don't know because it's commercially knit. It's not like, you know, they're, they're so, the stitches are so fine. It's commercially knit, so it's not really going to um, be very good. But the combo, I think it'll be fine. But what I was thinking was doing a red toe and then flames up from the toe and then black. So it wouldn't be just all black because that would bore me to tears. So yeah, if anyone wants to design that pattern or knows a pattern like that with a chart for the flames, I would be ever so appreciative. It would be cool if I could copy these flames and put them down there. Hmm. So yeah, that's my plan. That's my plan. All I have to do is just mirror it. All I have to do is just mirror it. Um, yeah, so I bought some yarn for him as well for socks. Um, up at the Knitting and Stitching show. These are Opal Cotton Premium and I got them because they are they have a little bit less yardage. So everything else had like 125. This is 410. <laughs> you know, I wanted it to be a bit thicker because they go faster then. Um, yeah, so, and he likes, he, lo he loves like lots of different colors. So that's that. So yeah, that's my project. I started and then I re didn't realize how much work was going to be involved. <sighs> yeah. But look, it's a little, the little patch is cute. <laughs> but yeah, I think that might be for the best to just leave that alone. So I'll give it back to him. You know, he'll have that little bit that's fixed. And I just used some um, Faber something or other. Just some sock while I just had. Uh, someone gave it to me. I think this might be drops. I think Barbara, you gave me some of these. Uh, you gave me this, I think, as a gift. Thank you so much. So um, yeah, I used some of that. Um, just four ply to do that. But there's no saving these. There's no saving them. It's just all the fuzz, all the fleece has gone from the actual stitches, and there's just nothing left. But. I don't even know how he's managed to... I don't know how he finds he's comfortable. We've got tiles on the floor all downstairs. He must be freezing. The poor little man. The poor little man. Sure, I haven't even given him a jumper and I'm already thinking about giving him socks. What am I like? Anyway, listen, I this one this is just a small little podcast just to let you know that I'm heading to Barcelona, who the winners were, and thank you so much for watching um, my live. That was really fun. Um, and I would love to see you. If you're in Barcelona, please do come up and say hello. I would love to see you. And I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful day. And I hope to, I will get, I will be, I will be putting up pod, uh, little vlogs of Barcelona. Probably won't be an official podcast, but I will be doing vlogs. So, yay! Mwah! I love you lots. <laughs>